So Apollo just came out with this new thing that they're calling Apollo Federation. And the gist of it is you can take a GraphQL schema and split it across multiple different services. And then this is a way to basically manage that and combine them all into one. And so what this looks like is something like this. So we may have a GraphQL schema where we have a user type and then that may be in a single service and this is in sort of a microservices context. So each service may be a server, could be multiple servers, um, but you may have one server which has a user it's defining and then another service or server uh, also wants to use that user or use that type. So it's basically trying to solve the problem of you have multiple microservices and let's say you want to run GraphQL across all of those microservices and you want a single GraphQL schema across all of them or at least a central GraphQL schema that you query all the data from. So how? what's the best way to set that up? So this is kind of answering that problem or trying to tackle that. And so you would do it in something like this, or at least this is the way they are proposing. And so what it can look like is you can extend types as well. So for example, you may have a user type defined in one service, and then another service can extend that type and add other fields on top of it. So for example, the review service they're showing here um, can add a field called reviews on the user type. And maybe you have another service called product, and then you add the products field onto the user. Um, so you can extend these types across your schema. So that is the gist of it. Um, and so what this looks like, at least at the bottom, they have a link to code sandbox. What the code looks like for that is something like this. So how it works is you're going to have this thing that sits in front, which is known as the gateway uh, server. Um, or service, I guess, and this will basically join the entire GraphQL schema together. Um, and this is going to be connected to other, it's gonna sit in front of basically a bunch of different services. So here's what it looks like. We have, it's this is the gateway server that I'm looking at. So this points to four different services, accounts, reviews, products, inventory, and this is just the official Apollo example for this. And what it's doing is there's five servers in total, these four, and then the gateway itself. So the gateway, what it's going to do is it's going to fetch the schema from here, fetch the schema from here, here, and here, and it's going to combine them together. So uh, I assume that's what this gateway.load does, is it's fetching all these and it combines them, and then we have a GraphQL schema right here. Um, and so after we combine that schema together, uh, what we can do is we can now uh, make requests and the gateway will basically hit these different services to fulfill the data automatically. So you'll notice that there's no logic here on which gateway to actually call, or not which gateway, but which service to call. Like nowhere here in the code do we say, hey, if they query this data, fetch accounts. If they query that data, uh, fetch from the product service. So basically, Apollo has created this query planner that given a GraphQL query, it will figure out the services that it has to hit for you, um, which is really interesting. So in practice, if we come, this is the GraphQL playground for that. If we go to the schema here, we can see what this looks like. We can see an entire schema, and this is going to be defined across multiple different services. So for example, we can see the user type here, and we can see the reviews and all that stuff. Um, and I also pulled the code down locally just to see what it looked like um, on VS Code. And you can see that this is an example of the accounts service right here. And uh, we have a user type here, and it does not have the reviews. And then in the reviews, they are extending the type, right? They're extending the user type, and they're adding reviews. They're also extending the product type, right? So not a single... Uh, I don't know, service you'd call it, um, is defining the entire schema. Each part is being combined together. So what I was really curious about was what this actually looked like when you actually start querying stuff, especially with, say, a complex uh, query. So, I mean, I did something here, and I'm really glad that they added this. They added a query planner where you can kind of see the sequence of things that Apollo does underneath the hood to get the data for this. 
Now, to be honest, I'm not 100% sure how this, uh, what this maps to. Like, I don't totally understand. Uh, at least I don't have a good mental model of, all right, this is the query plan. How many requests are happening underneath the hood? Is it requesting the accounts every time it says the word fetch? So I can see the word fetch one, two, three times, four, five. So I don't know if it made five calls. I'm not sure also like uh, if this is multiplied. So for example, if I have me reviews, author, product reviews, uh, I'm curious to know, um, for example, if for I fetch me and then that fetches reviews then it fetches products and it refetches the reviews that sort of thing um, when i actually tried it out locally and then added some console log statements to see how many requests that are being made it actually seems like it's very smart so one thing i noticed was um, and we can move this sucker down uh, maybe we'll just refresh is for example notice we have the user ada lovelace and then if we scroll down in the reviews, we'll notice Ada Lovelace shows up again in one of the reviews. So Apollo was actually smart and it doesn't re-request the user here. It already had the user data here, so it reused it. So the query planner actually seemed pretty smart to me. But one thing, the uh, one concern I have with this whole uh, kind of approach is there's gotta be at least one query that this does not work well with. And what I mean by that is because Apollo is automatically selecting uh, or is basically generating this query planner and querying the data from the services, you don't exactly, uh, you don't get to choose how it's doing that. Apollo is choosing that, or at least their algorithm is. And so there's gotta be some queries where that is not efficient for, um, I imagine. It looked pretty good with the ones I tried, but I can imagine there's gotta be some GraphQL queries where it does not perform well at all. Uh, we can optimize, like for example, these individual services, but we may need to do an optimizations at the gateway level as well, which may be custom to what you're building um, and may not be something that Apollo can do itself. And so that was something where this looks like a nice solution, but I'm really concerned about what it looks like if a query doesn't work well. What does it look like if I need to be able to customize a certain query at the gateway level? So for example, what if this me query did not uh, perform very well? How can I break out and define which services are being hit specifically for that? Um, which I couldn't find any good examples for. Maybe this is already exists. Um, but that would be something I would definitely take a look at if you're considering using this is making sure that there's a way to uh, customize things if a query does not work out of the box with the Apollo gateway. And then this is also something I would also be very cautious to use um, unless you're a very big team. I don't think it makes a lot of sense to split your GraphQL schema into microservices like this unless you're a very big team, but that may be super obvious. Um, I think it just adds a lot of complexity breaking it up like this and it can cause a whole load of problems that I don't think is worth it unless you have big teams that you're wanting to split the workload between. I don't think this makes sense for uh, just a couple developers or for a small startup to do something like this, um, at least not at the start. I feel like just a single GraphQL schema makes more sense until it grows very large. So if you're interested in trying this, uh, I definitely give it a try. I think it is pretty interesting to see um, how it works. And I thought it was pretty cool how it just maps the queries for you. Um, but I would definitely try out the, your most complex queries to make sure that Apollo's uh, query planner uh, maps well with it and that it actually creates a good query that you're happy with. Um, I'm also curious how... Uh, I guess mutations would work the same way as queries. The other thing to note is it didn't look like subscriptions is quite out yet in the what's next down here. Uh, their post looks like subscriptions are coming, um, but it looks like queries and mutations, I would assume, are good to go. So yeah, double check before you commit to this that you can customize some of this stuff if it does not go appropriately. And that is pretty much my main concern with this. I looks like a better solution than schema stitching is. I don't really spend a lot of time on thinking about the best way to break up a GraphQL schema across 
multiple different microservices, so I'm not really sure the best way to do it. Um, but I don't know if this is a good way to go about it. I think you at least, Apollo needs to add, if they do not have already, a way for you to customize how the query planner picks these services. Um, or else I don't think really any enterprise can use this because they're just going to run into something where the query is too slow and they need to customize it. Uh, so, yep, I'd love to see that from Apollo. If you're watching this video, I'd love to see some documentation on that. And maybe I just missed it. Um, so, yeah, those are my thoughts on the Apollo Gateway and the Apollo Federation.